may have heard that there is a huge demand for skilled workers in the field of technology. With great paying jobs, lots of demand, seems fantastic, doesn't it? Except if you're like me, you know, sometimes it's hard to know where to start. What skills should I get first and, and why are those skills important? Well, that's what this video is about. In this video, I'm going to talk about a skill that's very useful. It'll serve you both as, as an entry point into your career as well as throughout your career. It's a skill that you can learn in multiple different ways. And it's a skill that a lot of other skills are dependent upon. It's called Linux. Linux is an operating system and in this video I'll talk a little bit about what Linux is then I'll talk about several different ways that you can learn Linux and then I'll talk at the end of the video about a very important aspect if you're first entering the industry to prove your skills in Linux. So the first thing is what is Linux? Now I could go on there's a whole history to Linux but effectively there's an operating system called Unix which was the first sort of de facto operating system for mainframe systems. It was, it was shared amongst multiple mainframe systems as opposed to being a proprietary system. And that Unix operating system was what the entire computational industry was built upon. So you used Unix in order to work with mainframes and the only computers were mainframes. Now again, I won't go into a whole long history, but all of a sudden we, we ran into a problem where we had this you know, Unix systems out there, but then we had these desktop systems and they also needed an operating system. So they had their own proprietary operating systems, some that could be shared, things like DOS, the disk operating system, there were some other ones out there as well. But Linux came out as a clone of Unix that could run on these personal computers. And this became a very powerful tool because Linux was built as an open source project. So the idea is that it was a community built project, it was open source, which meant that all of the code that was part of the Linux operating system was available for anybody to look at, meaning it was transparent. You could also modify and you could work with that code and share your results with others so it was community built. This meant that it became transparent, secure, stable, well known and highly customizable. So now you could take Linux and you could run it on little small computers. This is a little Raspberry Pi. You could run it on custom components. So I could modify the Linux operating system to do just what I wanted it to do to work with controllers for factories, to work with routers, to work with any type of device that I might have. So now we have this amazing, flexible, uh, powerful operating system. And if you use a desktop operating system like Mac OS X or Windows 11, for example, you're familiar with how an operating system lets you interact with the hardware using a graphical interface. Well, you don't need a graphical interface if you're just putting in a controller or a sensor into a factory. So those are very large operating systems designed for a home user or for productivity applications. In fact, if you're using Mac OS X and you drop to a terminal prompt, you're actually using a version of Unix at its core, but you're abstracted, you're, you're separated from that core by things like, um, you know, graphical interfaces so you can just move icons around and such. And those, are, those operating systems are great for that. Linux, on the other hand, does have a desktop version and it's getting better and better. There's several, you get choose whatever desktop version you want. But with Linux, you're actually going to be able to really control what you want and what you don't want. And that's really the key to it. And this means that it is used for web servers, it is used for servers that don't need to have a graphical interface, it is used in research and cybersecurity, it is used in system administration, in networking, it's reused extensively. So that's why the skill of Linux is such a foundational skill, because you'll understand the core of how computation works, not just from a desktop standpoint, but at a server level, at a structural level. So it's a very important skill to have. And then you might be wondering, well, how do I acquire this skill? Well, you have a number of different choices. We also, we always have the option of self-learning. So you could watch YouTube videos. You could get something like this nice Raspberry Pi 400 or even a smaller version of the Raspberry Pi. These are very inexpensive, relatively inexpensive systems that you can get and you can run a version of Linux on here. Now, 
The Raspberry Pi 400 is it's one of my favorite devices because it's an all-in-one device. You get the computer plus a keyboard here, and it also comes with different resources. It has the it has a mouse and it has the power supply. But one of the resources that you also get with the Raspberry Pi 400 is a little book that you can use to start learning about how the Raspberry Pi works, which is Linux at its core. Now, I would caution you that, you know, this is great because this can be used by children and these can be used by researchers. This has a huge range of applications, so you can go very deep with this or you can just start learning about computers and electronics in general using this. This is really one of the more flexible devices that you can get. I, I recommend Raspberry Pis to everyone. I'll, I'll link down below to some of those. But this beginner's guide will walk you through how to use the Raspberry Pi. The only caution that I have with self-learning or learning through something like a beginner's guide is that you might not really know the pathway. So for example, if you're watching YouTube videos, some of them might be too advanced. Some of them might not be advanced enough. The Raspberry Pi beginner's guide tends to focus on the graphical user interface, whereas in the world of technology, you'll be using more command line. So that can be very difficult to sort of learn about something that you don't know about when you don't know how to start learning about it, if that all makes sense. So great devices, highly recommended. It, it gets you the ability to have Linux on your desktop. You can also use a virtual version of Linux and I have videos here on the channel about that. So that's one way that you can learn. Self-learning, challenge, how do you structure it? The next type of learning you could have would be a classroom learning experience. So these are great. You, if you're near any type of technical institution or college, then chances are they have some beginner classes in Linux where you can go and you can learn the foundation. This is great because of course it's structured for you. You have access to some expertise that can help answer questions. You can adjust, you know, what do you need to learn, find resources. It's also nice because you might be able to make some friends and you might be able to start building up a network. The challenge of course with traditional education is that it's usually on a schedule. So you have to be there at a certain time. You have to be in a place where you can go to school and, and find that. Some schools have different entrance requirements. Um, so that can be challenging to go to school. But if you do have that ability, then you have a nice structured experience with some expertise guidance and you can make some friends and you build a network. Now, another way that we can learn Linux is through online. So the actual structured online courses. My favorite organization that does that is the Linux Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization that has a number of different courses available on Linux from beginner to intermediate to advanced. And I will link down below to the Linux Foundation because they offer discounts. I have a discount code, so I'll make sure I put that in the description because that way you can get a bit of a discount if you take their courses. They also offer something that is really very useful, which brings me to sort of the third aspect of learning Linux, and that is certification. So you need to be able to prove your skills, especially if you're a beginner. If you go and you say to someone, I know Linux, well, how do you prove that? If you've joined GitHub or you've been a member of a Slack server and you've worked on projects using Linux, you can point to your projects as proof of competency. You could get a job and gain experience as proof of competency. But how do you get your foot in the door? How do you get someone to say, let's, let's talk to this person, maybe have a little technical interview with this person. And a great way to do that is through certifications. And you want to make sure that no matter what type of certification you get, that it's something that's recognized in industry as being valuable. And the Linux Foundation, that's why I like them, is that they also, they have courses, e-courses that you can take at your own pace at your own time, but then they also have that certification element as well. Now you can take Linux courses through Skillshare or Coursera or Udemy, there's lots of different options. And after, when you complete that course, you will be able to get a, a little badge or whatever the case may be. But a true certification would be an exam that you write. And you would write that exam as at least proof that you've gone through and you understand the concepts and have some competency with that skill set. So Linux is a super important operating system. You know, it's used everywhere. It's highly customizable. There are multiple ways to learn Linux. 
self-study, go to a school, or do the, the online. And the certification is a great way to prove those skills. So if you're looking for skills that'll help open doors, Linux is a great one. Here on the channel, I do have some videos where I talk about virtual machines. So if you have a Mac or if you have a Windows machine and you want to create a instance of Linux so that you can practice and play with it, check out some of those videos and let me know in the comments down below, are you going to learn Linux? Do you already learn Linux? If you do, how did you learn it? What would you recommend that other people do in order to learn Linux if you've already learned that skill? If you're just on the journey of trying to break into a technical career, are you going to pursue Linux as an option? There are other options as well and I'll talk about those in some other videos. If this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up or a like or share with someone that also maybe wants to break into a career in the technical industry. Thank you for watching.